Welcome to The Garage Engineer, I'm Dennis. Today I wanted to talk about one of the most important tools in any shop, makerspace, home, vehicle, anywhere you go, this is the most important tool to have. So the tool I'm talking about is the first aid kit. So this right here is my shop first aid kit. This is what I recommend to anyone uh, asking me how to set up a first aid kit. One, always I make my first aid kits. I don't buy any of those pre-made kits. The only thing I would, if I ever, because they're one, they're too expensive, and two, there's always stuff in there that you don't really need. There's some basic items that you can do with in your first aid kit, and you don't need all that little extra stuff. What I really like when you want to get fancy is to have a good container. So if you want to travel with it or have it in your vehicle, you might want to spend a little bit of money on that. But if you're just making a simple first aid kit for your shop or for your house, then all you need is a like shoebox container. I prefer one with the lid that has a locking mechanisms on it because anything those shoe containers that uh, don't lock they always get hit knocked off and it's just a mess but right here this is the first aid kit now I haven't gone through it in a while so I need to check on the supplies because people come in and use it and you never know what is missing what's been used um, and also it's probably a good idea to check it every so often once a year so just to make sure you do have the right materials because if first aid kits no good if you're in an emergency you need something and it's not there. One of the first things I think is important is the alcohol prep pad. These are just alcohol infused gauze pads that uh, are easy to clean. I think these are a lot easier to use than having alcohol separate and then having to dump it onto something. You just tear it open and just start wiping. So it clean, it's good for cleaning areas uh, before you put any medication on or, or sealing the wound. Um, it's also good if you needed to clean uh, ink off of a piece of plastic then you can also use these too so I usually get those and they come in big packs of a thousand now that's the other issue is a lot of these the first time you make a first aid kit you're gonna have to they're like these prep pads come into like 200 or a thousand uh, per piece so the first time you buy all this stuff yes it's gonna be more expensive than if you just bought a pre-made kit but you could divide those items up and make multiple kits and that's where your cost savings comes but usually I haven't been able to find alcohol prep kits unless they come in like a six or a thousand uh, count box but that's still only like seven bucks at Sam's I like the big gauze pads they are good for cleaning they're good for bigger cuts uh, to cover up this is a uh, two by twos um, and this is antibacterial but uh, it doesn't have to be that just basic gauze pads and then once you have this, I don't like to use tape on it because tape never sticks to the skin. So I like to use, uh, these are cotton wraps, uh, or they call it stretch bandages, but they're just basically cotton, holds the pad onto the wound. And I like to use that more than uh, using just regular tape. But I do have tape in here. This is waterproof foam tape for smaller areas or hard to wrap areas. Let's see what else we got. There's more gauze. Now, uh, when I did have the family pet, she injured her foot, and the vet gave us these. And these are just the same uh, self-sticking adhesive wraps, and uh, we had a few extra. So even though it says no chew on it, it's good for humans too. Here's a triangular bandage. It's good to have one of these. Uh, you don't really need a splint, but there's a finger splint. I like to have tweezers in there to get little uh, wood slivers that it gets stuck in your skin. It's good to have that. And here's just more gauze. This is just non-sterile gauze. That's good for cleaning up. Uh, once you, if you get a lot of blood, and once you get the area clean and secure, if you want to use the alcohol pads to get the dried blood off, or you can use uh, non-sterile gauze to help clean the area up. So the rest of this is just more stretch bandages. Here's a, this is a bigger pad. Uh, it's a five by nine, basically. It helps more uh, absorbing wound fluids another stretch bandage so basically that's really all you need uh, it's missing some bandages so it looks like someone's been in here and just take regular day-to-day -day bandages if you get a small little cut then uh, that's missing and it's also missing the antibacterial uh, triple antibiotic I don't know where that's at so that's good that we're going through it because the next time you 
I would have gone to open this it, in an emergency, it would have been here. Another thing to have, especially in the shop, would be uh, some type of eye wash kit. Now, I'm in the shop and I've got a sink, so I'm not too worried about it. Just make sure the sink is easily accessible and you know how to get to it blindfolded while in your shop because uh, you might get something in your eye and you're not going to be able to see to get to it. So just make sure that path is clean. They do make little bottles that you can use for eye cleaning. So if you're not it, near somewhere that has a sink, then that would be good to have nice sterile water to clean. Um, so that is the first aid kit that I have for the shop. But uh, just recently, I got something new. So I was at my Goodwill the other day and stumbled across this. This is a vintage Johnson & Johnson first aid kit, model number 8173. Now, nowadays, everything's made out of plastic or cloth, and you're not going to find these metal cases, uh, possibly in the commercial setting, but I think they've even gone to uh, fully plastic cases. But I love the look of this. It's old vintage metal, and um, you know, it was in pretty good shape. Let's see, how much do we pay for this? Let's see, it was a yellow label, and it was only $7, which is kind of funny because uh, we're going to go through this because I'm sure everything's outdated on this, but the I went ahead and pre-purchased some items to replace here. I've spent more money replacing the items uh, that go in here than I did on the actual box itself, which is kind of funny. And I didn't spend that much because we went to the Dollar Tree, which is a trick that I have I wanted to show you. Let's go get inside here and see what uh, is in here, if, if anything. So I've already peeked inside here, so I kind of know what's going on, but we'll pretend like this is a brand new. So this is just a metal case. Um, it actually has a nice little gasket seal, rubber seal around the edge right here. That's kind of nice. But everything in here, it looks like it's a brand new kit. It looks like they did add uh, some 3M tape. That doesn't look standard. I'm not sure if the after bite is standard. Uh, that might be an addition to this kit. Someone added more sterile pads. And uh, let's see here. And then I'm not sure. So here's Neosporin. Um, this was added later. And these scissors, which is kind of cool. I, I don't know if these are standard. They don't really cut much, but it, it's good compact scissors just to cut like gauze or something not an emergency but just if you're doing basic first aid so my question is how old is this box um, I need to look up the date of maybe when it was in production but usually uh, you can look to see the expiration date on some of these items so we know these were made after let's look at something that was here originally the issue I've always had with these, they've got code numbers printed on here, but usually that's just a lot number and when it's been run, but they don't have expiration dates, which I was, would be su surprised of why they don't. Um, so there's nothing on the box. So let's take a look inside and see if there's something on the actual product itself. Uh, yeah, see here, here's just a lot or run number. I'm sure they have it in their system of when it was made but there's not really an expiration date now because the packaging you can see some of it has staining and it's, this is kind of yellowed look um, definitely old so I don't want to use it but let's keep on going I I'm curious to see what the expiration date of something that was original to this box um, was and then that'll kind of give us an idea of how old this particular box I'm sure they've made this for a long time since probably I'd say the 70s 80s so let's keep going all right let's see here's a rescue blanket we probably could reuse that uh, I don't know if that's really an actual there's no reason for it to expire it's still good it hasn't been used so we'll keep that in the keep pile tourniquet I'm, I'm curious to see what what their tourniquet looks like look at that it's a cloth band I guess Really anything could be a tourniquet. Look at that, the metal. Now everything's plastic with webbing. This is cloth with a metal clip. Uh, very interesting. Now it has a warning in here, and I'll give a warning too, is make sure you have some. Oh, this is cool. This is tourniquet applied. So it's good to put a time and location. Um, know how to use a tourniquet. Because once you put one on, what I learned in the Boy Scouts is once you put it on, only a medical professional should take it off. Uh, so make sure you really know when to use it 
and how to use it properly uh, before applying a tourniquet because they they could they can do damage but they also can save someone's life if uh, when applying one so keep that in mind so we will keep this in our kit until we can find a different one I mean even a rubber hose uh, could be used as a tourniquet oh here's some instructions in here maybe we'll read that sometime I won't read it on on air but uh, that's interesting so that's, that's kind of cool little tag there that came with that we will not we'll put that in the save pile here this after bite it's yellowed I would have thought um, there would be a date but there's just a lot number I wonder if there's a way to look up online the lot number to see uh, if it can give you a date it looks newer ish maybe we'll keep that we'll put that in a possibly keep pile see all these all this gauze it's yellowed so we're definitely going to get rid of that we'll keep the scissors in here that's in our keep pile trash here's some band-aids that were either separated um alcohol these are probably all dried out here's a breathe right strip well there's the other half of it oh here they are so the packaging just came off but we'll just get rid of that this is triple antibiotic uh, here you go here's a lot all right there you go our first date march 2000 so this is in the late night 90s if this expired in 2000 this was had to have been at least give them a year if not two so i'd say 88 eight, 98 99 time frame probably more 97 98 but this looks like it was added later this does it because this is z medical so this is not um doesn't help us so the 3m tape is it any good yeah it still sticks we'll keep that here's some ammonia inhalants it says for temporary relief of dizziness or fainting you know that's definitely this will pep you up I don't know if it's any good maybe we'll do that as a, a test there's no dates on here so we'll uh, we'll put that off to the side maybe that'll be a keep we'll see how that lasts here's some alcohol swabs trash here's some gauze that looks newer but we'll again there's a date for that triple antibiotic is in 2000 Benzalkominium chloride aqueous solution that's interesting no date on that see this is punched the lot number but nothing now uh, here's some uh, here's irrigation solution so this is what I was talking about if you didn't have a sink and this is probably more sterile to use in an eye than just using the sink but again it's evaporated and it's old so you don't want to use that so that will go in the trash and I might keep some of these old boxes just for uh, here's this some type of steri strip to close a wound oh I was gonna say I was gonna keep some of these boxes just for uh, historical reference but other than that here's a clip that went to an ace bandage before they used Velcro, they used these ace bandages, and oh, look at that—that that, the elastic in there is dead. It just—you stretch it, and it just cracks, and it's dead. Trash. Here's some tweezers in this kit. This is plastic. I don't really like using these plastic ones. Uh, anything metal is a lot better than that. But we'll keep that in here. Here's some more antibiotic. Here's some uh, bigger gauze. For cleanliness, we'll probably just throw this away or, or keep it for uh, display. But um, now here's a triangular bandage. I like this or using a uh, uh, cut up t shirt and a triangular uh, bandage to make um, slings. So even though it's a little yellowed, we'll keep it um, to use as a sling. Or you can use it to wrap around gauze, so it's not really, it's more to hold on to, uh, on to wounds. Because this even says non-sterile, do not place on open wounds. So you put gauze on first, and then you would wrap, wrap this around to hold the gauze. But we got tape too, so that kind of takes the place of the triangular bandage. And I like wrapping it in tape better than I do 
triangular bandages. Here's another triangular bandage. And here's roll gauze. So here's cling. They call it cling roll gauze. This says non-sterile. Two, do not place an open wound. So they want you to put sterile gauze on it. And this actually looks pretty good. So we'll probably keep that. Yeah, so they want you to put sterile gauze on first before you wrap it in this. So we'll, that's not too bad. And here's their flex gauze. This looks newer. This doesn't look like it was part of the kit. But again, so nothing in Johnson Johnson's first aid kit tells you that it is uh, the expiration date. So that's an issue with that, but we're going to fix that right away. So the first thing I want to do is let's put a, uh, instead of expiration date, let's put a built date on here uh, just so we know when we initially built the kit so we can kind of keep an idea of how long all this has been in here. Um, I found this tape. It's a little expensive. It's a 3M. Uh, let's see, the model number is 2097. This is exterior painter's tape, and it's supposed to hold up in the weather. Um, so it, and I think it holds really well. And it is uh, easy to write on too. So we're going to get a piece of that tape and we're going to stick it right on the inside here. And we're just going to write, uh, let's see, built date of today. So let's see here. So sorry being left-handed, I might have blocked that while I was writing, but just built, built on 11, 2023. So that'll give us an idea of when all these items were put together. So we can keep an idea of how uh, old this is or the last time we checked on it. Uh, we can even write that like checked on and then fill it back up. So just kind of keep a, a living record of all that. So if you want to build a small first aid kit, you can usually if you go online you're gonna find bulk packaging of items but what I found if you just want a small little home kit to find uh, reasonably good items but cheap you go to the Dollar Tree or your dollar store whatever even Walmart they sell you these big old kits I have a big old uh, packaging of items and you only need a small handful like uh, this is 200 units for the alcohol wipes now this is I've been used in other uh, in other projects but something like this I mean you're gonna spend six dollars and you only need a little bit even this is too much to have in your first aid kit but that's what was left so we'll stick it in there um, but like that's what I'm saying unfortunately uh, Dollar Tree that day did not have uh, any alcohol wipes so you could always have gauze and then a bottle of uh, al isopropyl alcohol or hydrogen peroxide to clean the area but I want to try to make it, if you want a compact first aid kit, then um, I would try to use these wipes. Now, for my home kit, I always have a bottle of isopropyl alcohol, 91%, uh, one for cleaning. I know it stings, but it also can be used as a heat source for if you're in a blackout and need to make a small little burner stove. So, um, and space isn't a problem at the house, uh, but carrying around a first aid kit or having just a small one, these work a lot better. Here we go, let's get some of this stuff out here. Triple antibiotic in the smaller pouches like the one that they had earlier, but I can never find them unless they're in like a thousand units per uh, package, and I'm never going to go through all that because uh, they expire so quickly. So I just get a little container of triple antibiotic uh, from the Dollar Tree. Now I know uh, there's been studies now showing that this isn't as good as just using plain Vaseline, but uh, I don't know. I, I grew up on triple antibiotic from the 80s, so that's why I still use it. If you can see on here, the printed expiration date is embossed on it rather than actual ink printed. And this says um, 2025, so, so let's say it's 2023, so you get a good two years. So if that said 2000, this is probably a pit mid 1990s uh, first aid kit all right so after the triple antibiotic so you need to clean it up somehow so that's how I have gauze pads uh, these are the sterile ones so uh, you want to use this with a little alcohol it's maybe your alcohol wipes clean it up 
triple antibiotics and then you want to cover it up with the different sizes of gauze pad depending on how big the uh, cut is. I've got some 2 by 2s here, 4 by 4s and then this is a uh, ABD pad 5 by 9 for hopefully you don't get anything that big but it's good to have something big there. Then after that I got rolled gauze, two different types. Uh, this is the self-adhesive stuff they use. It's just like wrapping uh, uh, medical wrap with a little glue in it and then here's just regular roll gauze it doesn't stick to itself you can use tape after that so I like to have both just because uh, if you want to do a lot of wrapping wrap it up here and then at the end instead of using tape you can wrap it up with the self-adhesive uh, wrap so all this I found at the Dollar Tree dollar twenty-five. Well, it's a dollar twenty-five each and then I always like to have band-aids so we got some little band-aids and then these are the bigger um, two by four band-aids. This is just basic everyday injuries. Uh, you can go in so much more detail about for more severe injuries uh, and that's for another video but you still just need to have the basics in your shop to stop bleeding if if you get a cut. Uh, that's the that's the majority of injuries uh, in shops and it's good to have it as close to, as possible um, to get it taken care of. All right, let's see if we can get all this stuff back into the box. And then I've got one more item I wanted to show you that doesn't really, it's not really first aid related, but it's kind of cool. Uh, so let's see here. Let's see if all this fits and how well it fits. So the next thing is mounting the first aid kit. Well, typically you want to put it in the place that's easily accessible and somewhere that uh, is centralized. I like to put my fire extinguishers and first aid kits near the light fixture because that's where everyone goes entering and leaving a room. So you always see it and you know where it's there. And if you again had to do it blindfolded, most likely you'd be able to find that particular spot. Now, for this case being metal, uh, they typically had little tabs, as you can see right here and you would put, put a screw in the wall and hang it. But to get it off quickly off the wall is not that easy. So since this is metal, I thought, why don't we get the Harbor Freight sells a magnetic toolbar and it is very strong and it can easily hold this up. So if you ever needed to go, you just rip it off the wall. See, it's even harder to get off. Rip it off the wall and you're ready to go. If you're concerned about it being wobbly, uh, which really with this magnet it's not, but you can always do two, one at top and one at bottom, and it would be very hard to get off the wall. But even the one, it, it, I mean, it's, it, it holds up there pretty, pretty significantly. So for the tip, I'll give a little backstory. I use a lot of acetone in the shop for cleaning items, clean uh, tools and different things like that. It has a lot of uses because it's fast drying. Um, so I buy it by the gallon, but I hate opening this up and using it straight from the gallon container. So I've kept, I lost uh, my acetone container of the uh, quart size. So I think, I, I think this is paint thinner or something else that I use that I repurposed it. And that's why it has tape on it. But even this, this cap is terrible. Uh, you have to have a screwdriver to pop it open and I can't use it. So what I did was I popped a little hole in it and this is how I dispense it. Uh, for a long time and then I used just a golf tee to cover it up and it works fine but I saw something online and I finally found it and this was actually at the Dollar Tree so this is my tip uh, if you go into the ladies section with the nails uh, fingernail files and all that acetone is what they use to take off uh, nail polish well this is a dispenser this is nail polish but it's also a dispenser so right here on the top of it, if you once you flip the cap open, it has a little, uh, I don't know what you call it, some type, a dish. And if you push on it, it's a pump. You pump, and it pumps acetone up. So normally what this is used for is you take your cotton ball, and you can just dab it uh, and push on it, and then it soaks the um, cotton ball up with acetone. Well, for the shop, instead of having to get all this out, dump it, all this, you can do this one-handed. Uh, use Q-tips, or I can even use it just a shop rag and just kind of dap it on there, pump it a couple times, and there you go. So this is, you can easily do it one-handed, rather than having to open up your acetone, dump it out with two hands, and then close it back up. 
So this is definitely an exciting addition to the shop. Uh, makes things go by faster and quicker and will be, um, I think, used quite a lot in the future. So I hope the lesson you learned today basically is just get a first aid kit. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. If you don't want to build one, fine. Just go buy a pre-made one. That is better than nothing. It's almost like uh, everyday carry. You, you're always configuring, changing out. Really, I've just stripped it down to the, the bare necessities of what you use most in the shop. And I hope that this inspires you to just get a first aid kit in your shop if you already have one. Go check it out because I'm sure it's been a while since you looked at it and stuff's missing or stuff's expired. Get that changed out. So let me know in the comments down below what you would add to your this first aid kit to make it better or what you have in your first aid kit that you really love and that's really uh, something that you think is a necessity. I'd love to hear it. So until next time, keep on making. And if you'd like to see more videos like the one that you just saw, you can check here and here. And remember the ABCs of making. Always be creating. Till next time.